I want to compliment you because thank you. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all we have. Well, well, I've been waiting to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> but you didn't not say even, that to PJ not even, Novak. You're not even curious what the compliment is. I love that. No, no interest. Any you're just compliment. happy. It's a compliment. Yep. No. Uh, first of all, I've known you a long time. Uh, always consistently hilarious. And then you did this podcast way back in June of 2019. So that's like a a long time even before COVID. Right. And when you were on that podcast, you. Uh, first of all, you said you had mixed feelings about being my friend, which is fine. I've evolved. You've evolved. <laughs> yes, the culture has evolved. <laughs> you know, during COVID, I sat around, I did some real soul searching, and I said, maybe I am okay with Conan O'Brien existing in the world. <laughs> well, so one good thing came out of COVID. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, no, but on, on the uh, on that podcast, you s described this project that you were working on, mm -hmm. and... Let me tell you something, everybody does that. I mean, you came on and you said, well, I have this dream, which is you wanted to make this movie. Mm -hmm. And you wanted to be, uh, make a romantic comedy, you know, a gay romantic rom-com. Yeah. And, uh, and I thought, okay, yeah, but everybody says they've got a project in mind that they're, that's gonna be available someday in the future if all goes well. Right. Here you are now back on the podcast and you've made the movie and you're promoting it. We made the movie, it is coming out. It's not only coming out, it's coming out in a wide release made by Universal Studios in thousands of theaters all over North America and then strangely the world, right? Um, except the countries that are homophobic, which is interesting. It, wait, I, so, there won't be a Saudi Arabian premiere of my gay rom-com <laughs> well, well, anytime wait, that, soon. I, that's where I wanted to see it. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> No, I did. I called the Cineplex Odeon in Saudi Arabia, Aww. and I, I said, I want my ticket to bros. Nope. The uh, Billy Eichner groundbreaking uh, rom-com. You booked the and, ticket. And they were, kept saying, it is not available, and yeah. I said, that's, that's a glitch. Yep. Nope, not a glitch. <clears throat> that's just uh, how it is in certain parts of the world. Um, but I'm happy that it's getting released elsewhere mm -hmm. where they don't hate gay people. This is... Uh, this is, but this is landmark because it's what's, what's, first of all, I mean, I want to talk about the whole arc of your career because that's the kind of time we have. Yeah. I've booked six hours for this. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to need more than that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I looked into it. Six hours will cover it. <laughs> um, but I'm very excited for you because your mission statement with this movie was you said you're not interested in depicting a version of queer life that is palatable. Mm -hmm. And I thought that is so intriguing and fascinating to me. Talk about that a little bit. Well, Bros, which is the rom-com I have coming out, produced by Judd Apatow, who, as all of you probably know, has made some of the funniest movies of the past 20 years, Bridesmaids and Trainwreck and 40-Year-Old Virgin, and the list goes on and on. And I wrote it with Nick Stoller, and Nick directed it, and he directed Sarah, uh, Forgetting Sarah Marshall and Neighbors. And you know these guys have a great legacy of making great comedies. And Nick came to me uh, back, like five years ago and said, I want my next movie to be a romantic comedy, but I think it would be cool if it was about a gay couple. Mm -hmm. But he acknowledged that he's not gay and uh, he asked me if I would write it with him and I could star in it if all went well and he would direct it. And I said, obviously, yes, a huge opportunity, one that I never saw coming in my life. Um, but the first thing I said to Nick is, even before I knew what the story of the movie would be, I said, it has to be authentic. Right. You can't just make when Harry met Sally and think you can just swap in two gay guys and have the story play out the same way because it wouldn't because, you know, yes, there is a lot of overlap in straight relationships and gay relationships, but also it is a little different. Mm -hmm. Two men together is different. And there's a lot of comedy to be mined from that. And right. also a lot of, you know, uh, po poignant moments and more thought provoking moments. And it's just a different experience. And. I think a lot of the LGBTQ characters we've seen, and we're seeing way more, obviously, than yes. we used to, especially in streaming and, and in indie films and on the internet, of course, and that's fantastic. That is a wonderful thing. But so much of it is done with an eye towards making us these like cutesy, two-dimensional characters that really are nothing like the actual gay men I know in my right, life. Right. Or like me. You know, I watch a lot of those shows and I a lot of those sitcoms. And even when they're very funny, I, I think, I don't know who those people are. 
you know, I, those are gay characters designed to not freak out straight people. Right. Mm. And I give straight people a lot more credit than that. Yeah. I have a lot of straight friends. My show, Billy on the Street, that I've done for years, has a huge fan base among straight people. Conan, you are theoretically straight. You know, you've, you've always <laughs> I, You know what? I go, in and, I go in and out. I don't know what that means. Everyone I know does you, now. You, you find some guys attractive, I think. And you've to- spoken oh, totally. very openly about it. I've, I'm very open about, yes. you know, there are men where I totally get it. Yeah. Very, and, and like Brad Pitt, I just think... Like that's a really good looking guy. Yeah. You know? So and then I, I call him and it gets weird. Oh, you know? Right, exactly. Yeah, and then, you know, sure. you're well, I won't go there. But um uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just did. <laughs> yes. I went there in my head. Um but yeah, I just thought I don't think we're giving straight people enough credit. Like funny is funny. If you yep. make a really funny Judd Apatow movie that happens to be about a gay couple, then straight people will love that. And it's not only funny, it's kind of fascinating. Yes. Because you're getting a peek into a a world, a culture of dating, of love, of sex that you think you might know but you don't really know. Right. And that was really important to me. I thought that would be exciting and hilarious and I'm happy to say so far, you know, when we do early screenings of the movie, a lot of the audience is straight. Most of the world is still straight. Uh, and they love it. It's really funny. It's just a fucking funny movie. Okay, watch the language. Uh, Why? Because I'm gay? <laughs> yes! It's okay when straight people swear. BJ Novak what? said every curse word on here. <laughs> Why well, I think said? I'm pretty evolved. <laughs> but I still believe yeah. that gay people shouldn't swear, but okay. straight people should. Okay. Hi, I'm Conan O'Brien, and I just got canceled. Um, <laughs> Welcome to Newsmax. <laughs> the new home of Conan That's O'Brien. That's the only thing I've carved out, is yes. that swearing is only for straight yes. people. Um, no, but is it possible mm-hmm. that uh, the first wave of representation uh, in you know on sitcoms needed to be that way, that there needed to be an evolution, or there needed to be a first wave that was more... I want to just say user friendly yeah. for people that you know starting in like I don't know the late '80s, early '90s. It just and the, this is the way it kind of maybe had to lay out. Where now we can get the point where you, Billy, can make a movie that really is telling it from a real point of view, yeah. as opposed to uh, let's water this down. Yeah, I, I mean it makes sense. There has been an evolution, and I'm really grateful that. You know, when I went to Judd and Nick and and I said that I wanted it to be really authentic, it's a Judd Apatow movie. His movies are like wild and raunchy and fun and also very heartwarming and uplifting. And I just said it once. I wanted it to be all of those things and there's no reason it shouldn't be. And they said, yeah, let's just go for it. Like if it's honest, it'll be funny and relatable to everyone. And we're just in a weird industry that made two movies about a talking hedgehog before they made one gay rom-com. You know what I mean? (laughs) So um, I have my own hedgehog movie coming out. No one worried about whether or not Sonic the Hedgehog was relatable. (laughs) We made 50 movies about dinosaurs, prehistoric, extinct creatures, and we never made one gay (laughs) rom-com. Nobody said, God, I hope that Velociraptor is endearing <laughs> to straight people. That's a really good point. Yeah. So the Velociraptor is going to rip off the kid's throat and then yeah. shoot acid into his eyes yeah. to blind him. No one ever said, is middle America ready for dinosaurs? <laughs> but that's the question that lingers yeah. over a movie about like two actual human beings right. <laughs> who walk the earth, you know, meeting and falling in love and, you know, driving each other crazy the way, you know, people do.